Hi, welcome to the session. Today we're going to be looking at the theme song for Rick and Morty and how do we create that in Logic Pro X. Rick and Morty's theme song has got a throwback sci-fi sound about it, combining electronic music and orchestral sounds. Let's have a listen. So here's a track for Rick and Morty's theme song. It's at 165.5 BPM and here's how it sounds. So that's how it is. Let's explore this track. Um, right from the beginning, I think the simple one to look out for is fact that we have a timpani so you look under orchestral tune percussion timpani tremolo and essentially this is what's going on pretty straightforward stuff um, just note that timpanis you you can't really have it too dry so uh, I send it to a bus and um, just send it to bus 3 and essentially bus 3 is okay, hang on yep it's got a space designer here and um, it's a large one pretty big one 6.6 .6 seconds bought the church and um, yeah this EQ is actually nothing it's just plain old EQ just right there and so you get a sense of space. So the next timpani is um, from the same thing, orchestral, tune, percussion, tif timpani, single strokes. I was going to say Tiffany. Okay, it's timpani, single strokes, right? So together, they kind of sound like that. And this one. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could automate the volume as well because this one doesn't really have a, a crescendo although they have a tremolo crescendo I found that the rate of crescendo wasn't exactly the right one for this particular one so sometimes you can pick a crescendo sometimes you can automate the volume a little bit in this case I didn't because it's set in the mix pretty well now um the next thing is a crash, and you want that kind of orchestral crash, not the pop drums kind of crash. So I went orchestral percussion, orchestral kit. And in the orchestral kit, you got all sorts of uh, different, you can see here, if you can zoom in a little bit, see wood blocks, tam-tams, ratchets, and there's a cymbal crash as well. So here's how it sounds. Really straightforward orchestral cymbal crash, and you put it together. And I find that this one has ambience enough, so you don't really need to send it to the reverb bus. Um, and then, this, if you notice, these are not the same um, tracks. Although there are two orchestral kits, they are different, because you can see that the levels are different, and this one has a send to the same reverb. And this one is the snare one. So you have a listen. So it's kind of like, uh, it's a fakey sounding snare and there's a little bit of flam. So if you look at this, um, there's kind of like, it's quantized to one eighth notes, but we have some flam over here at minus 43 ticks. So you got to play around with the flam to kind of get slightly more um, realistic kind of sound. So that's where all the snares are. And it doesn't sound great, so we need to pair it with uh, another drum kit. And in this case, it's drums and percussion, acoustic drum kit, studio brush kit. That one's a bit more organic sounding, so it sounds like this. And it's quite soft. And I've panned it to the left because I have another snare panned to the right. And in this case, it's, uh, sorry, here we go. It's a European, underworld, European, European folk kit. It's got some nice snares and little acoustic -y, orchestral type uh, instruments as well. 
Now, they all still have that machine gun thing going. Uh, that's what you get when you get drum samples that are not particularly... Um, have many samples. You know, some of them have like seven or eight round robins and they sound a bit more realistic that way. Um, I decided to take out some of the low end and the, you know, the mids and lows on this to sort of like just focus on that airy part of the snare. And this one I panned to the right. Uh, to the left, sorry. This one was to the right, this one to the left. So together, they sound a bit better. Not fantastic. But at a pinch in a mix, I think they're all right. Now, those are the orchestral bits. Um, I want to mention that there is a diving synth effect. I want to show you this diving synth effect. So let's have a, a fire diving. Now, it's 07, right? I don't know why this one is grayed out. But um, it's actually just one bar's worth. And um, what happened is I just selected it. And when you hold option, uh, hang on. Yeah, option, you get the possibility of uh, stretching it. So, um, I stretched it out. It doesn't sound great stretched up, but uh, it kind of works as well. So it sounds like this. You could design something from scratch. I just picked one from the Apple Loops and yeah, just was done with it. So it sounds like this now. Now let's get to the fun bits. This one took the most time to do um, because it's the most iconic sound as well. And uh, it's this one. Let's play this bit. That iconic opening sound. Okay, so let's start with the sound design for this. I use an ES2 uh, synth and you can find it here. And I started, I always like to start with a, a sort of preset that sounds quite close to what it could sound like. So I went to the tutorial settings, I picked an FM drive. I can't exactly remember what I mucked around with, but I tried to get the closest sound possible. Uh, probably had to muck around with the envelopes as well. And um, so without all the effects, this is what it sounds like. It's not too bad, you know, um, I think I got a pretty close approximation of what it's supposed to be and these are the settings so you can download the project and have a play with that. Um, now there are, there is quite a little bit of automation but let's get to the effects first. So there's a stereo delay and these are the settings, I didn't use any presets and uh, you get a little bit of a stereo delay like this. Pretty boring kind of stereo delay. Um, but what's interesting is when you use that with a tremolo at um, the same rate, or you can half the rate or you can double the rate, um, as with the stereo delay, you get stereo panning. Stereo pan delays. Yeah, so that's something uh, to play around with. And then if you open up the automation, you'll see there's a ton of automation. So in this case, this one, um, I went to ES2 um, MMF cutoff. So under the filters, there's a multi-mode filter cutoff. And you can see that's where the filter sort of moves. Yep, that's that little change in tonality was the filter. And then what happened was I detuned the oscillators as well. Just a very slight detune because I found that uh, there's OS1 and OS2 detune. I found that in um, the track itself, the original sound, there is some kind of detune going on. In fact, it's more aggressive than what I have here. But I kind of could live with this one. So... Um, 
and in the volume as well as sort of like volume automated. Now, when you have automation, um, especially volume automation, you want to be able to still balance the audio. So um, I have a gain plugin. And in this case, I put a plus 17 because I needed that much gain to balance everything out. But again, plugin is useful when you can't use the fader anymore because of your automation. So there you go. So now we've got that iconic sound. Let's go to the orchestral bits. Um, now we have this violin trill. And this one is interesting as well because it adds a lot of character. You can find it in orchestral strings, violins one, trill one. And this trill one, if I'm not mistaken, is the minor trill. Minor second. Yep. So it's got that um, <laughs> drama happening about it. And in that as well, there is automation. This is volume automation to really like bring it up. gets really loud right at the end, like FFF. And um, yeah, so that is Violins 1. And um, this one is hmm, something interesting because I don't know if it's in the original track, but I needed to put that in to really fatten up the track a little bit. And essentially, it's an ES2 synthesizer. And in there, I use a setting, a preset, a synth bass, funk synth bass, probably mucked around with it a little bit. And I put an ARP, and the ARP is under here, MIDI effects, to an eighth rate. And it's just playing one single note throughout. If you can see, here's why it plays. It's just this low bass that gives a bit of fatness to the track. Um, so yeah, you can leave it in, you can take it out. I feel like it fattens up the track a little bit, so I left it in. Now, uh, the next one is, uh, these are the bases, if I'm not mistaken. I use EXS strings under Factory Pop Strings, EXS Strings 2, and they sound like this. They're just an octave really sustaining right throughout. Um, and yeah, that's it. And the next one is, ah, the violas. And this one's very rhythmic. So it's a staccato. Now you can see under orchestral strings, viola, staccato. Um, these are the, how it sounds like. So there's this build up here, right? You can hear with everything. Nice little build up. And it's paired with a, another viola staccato. Same thing. And it's just. Now, this sounds more like a cello kind of range, but sometimes I like the sound better and it kind of works. So yeah, I just pick whatever works best in terms of sound, not so much the formal use of, uh, or the parts need to be this and, and that. So the sound is what matters. And in this case, the next part, right where everything builds up, there is a French horn crescendo. French horns crescendo, you can find under orchestral, brass, French horns crescendo, sounds like this. Nice and big, and brass always does well with reverb, so you need to send quite a generous bit of it. And I find French horns one of the nice and big type sounds that work. So here's how it sounds. Oof. Really does it. And um, in the next one in the intro, there's trombones under orchestral brass, trombones plus, and here's how it sounds. It's just the low end, very similar to the EXS strings too. And you notice on the low ends, EXS string two and trombones, I didn't really send a reverb because I find that sometimes having that reverb, although unrealistic, 
to not have a reverb, um, I feel that the bass is tighter and everything is just a bit more defined when you don't have reverbs on the low end. Now, um, now we have a cello staccato, and these are from orchestral again, strings, cello staccato. This is how it sounds. Now, they all sound a little bit machine gunny, but when you kind of put everything together, it's pretty okay. You just have to make sure that your accents are in the right place. So you got stuff like this and all these little, uh, you know, like stronger accents in the right place and it will feel much, much better. Now, there is another synth and uh, this synth sounds like this. kind of like a white noise rhythmic thing so I use an ES1 synthesizer one and you can see that um, I use a sequence element velocity sequence mucked around with it a little bit not very much and essentially what I did was a tremolo to get that beating pattern and you can see from the automation that the cutoff, the ES1 cutoff, is rising. And then it goes down. So that's pretty much the rhythmic pattern. And I EQ'd the heck out of it, just took out all the low end, much of the high end, and just to get that little vibe in there. That, that white noise kind of vibe so that's that and now we're on to this thing here which is what's this one? Ooh, oh this one has um it's actually the basic exs24 sound when you load exs24 as a default you get no sound right but what you get is a sine wave and the interesting thing about a sine wave is you can use it for uh, playing melodies and stuff. So I changed it to a legato and I increased the um, glide here. So you would get glide to other notes like this. That's essentially it. And you get a little... Um, It's kind of got that vibe already. So I just paired it with a string ensemble um, in Logic, which essentially is a string ensemble right here, an orchestral string, string ensemble. And this one is a channel preset. I normally don't use channel presets, but this one kind of works. So here's how it sounds. And as a pair, that's how they sound. Pretty straightforward, simple way, and this, so basically a sine wave sounds a bit like a triangle wave in a synth, you know, those kind of hip hop type sounds. So yeah, and normally if I need something like a sine wave, basic sine wave, I'll just open the XS24 just like without loading anything and you get a sine wave. So that's pretty cool. Now for the brass bits, here's how it sounds. Super 80s kind of sound. Now I use Alchemy for this first bit here and I found an 80s pop synth uh, brass. I just searched for 80s and I moved it to snappy and here's how it sounds. It's got a snappy uh, little sort of like um, filter thing going on at the start. And I use an ES2 which I like for the fatness, a tutorial setting called Analog saw tree oscillator, basic sawtooth kind of sound. Now you can hear some of that uh, fall in the sort of cut off a little bit. And I'm just trying to figure out which one was it? An automation thing? Nope, it's not an automation thing. 
Um, it's an envelope thing, I think. Yeah, so the envelope two, yep, is messing about with cutoff two. And then you can make your changes in envelope two to get that kind of change in the tonality. So you can hear the envelope changing the cutoff right there. And when you put it together, it's a nice 80s type chords. And of course, you have a brass section here as well, which is under orchestral brass, full brass. That's how it sounds, just adding a bit of texture there. Um, just making sure, have a look here. You can see some volume automation here as well, right at the end to really like bring out that bigness when the track closes. So that's where it is. And um, so everything sort of plays out their parts, nothing additional there. And right at the end, there's the diving scene effect. And of course, that's the electrical sound. And I think you can find, I found them in uh, loops. Uh, electric. Electric, yeah, I think one of the electric sounds, um, trying to find a name, it's electric surge, electricity surge. So it's probably a city. Huh. Surge. There we go. So this is only just one sound. Uh, so basically I just layer them like crazy. <laughs> Right, just put them one on top of the other with uh, crossfade drag and just creates the crossfades. And then I went to find more electrical stuff, uh, electrical noise. And then, yeah, I found one here. It's like, oh, that's not bad. So let's put it underneath and combine them. And that sounds kind of <laughs> like what happens. So. I was kind of proud of that because I wasn't sure if I could find an electrical sound within standard logic itself, but in your loops folder, you'll find one like that. And that is that. I hope you learned something useful today, like how to use automation to create evolving synth sounds. If you like, you can download the project at the link below. And if you like this video, please subscribe for more. See ya.